camera number three. reorganizing my parts boxes here so that I don't mix these up. These screws look a little bit damaged like someone's had them off before. No obvious difference any parts there. Leatherette patch here is sitting funny. Let's have a look. Certainly came off easy enough. Yeah, there's certainly no obvious amount of adhe extra adhesive on there. It may have been off before, it's hard to tell. Three screws. Oh, that's interesting. I'll do those screws back up. I want to check something there. It felt like that's wiggling. It may mean that the cam on the base of the film advance is loose. I just want to check this against the film advance for the other camera, which is here. Now the film advance for the other camera had small countersunk head screws, uh, a countersink in here and small screws holding that down. This one of the later camera, you can see that they are let in quite well there and they are quite solid heads on those screws. So there's a change there in design of the advance lever for camera number three. The leatherette on here, let's see if that'll come up. It's it's loose in places. You can see I'm hardly having to do much work there to get the lock to come up. Now it's coming adrift even before the scalpel gets anywhere near it. Okay, so there we have our leatherette. You can see a lot of corrosion products on the base there. It means that's been somewhere. It's been damp at some stage I would say. And this little cover plate, there are two of those. One that sits in that position and one that sits in that position and typically they may well just lift off with the uh, leatherette so our seven screws that hold the plate on the bottom here the chrome trim Chrome trim lifts off. There we go. Alright, lift out the lock lever again. Lift out the release lever and recover the spring from the base of the release lever so I don't lose it. 
it, it, you can wriggle that off that post. It's it's a hard process to describe, but it's it's very easy. The tripod sockets around here. See how we get on with these screws. Oh, yeah, that screw's falling out. That's more normal. That one too. Whether that's down to just the normal loosening of screws that happens over time anyway or whether that's down to abuse as people screw in the tripod screw and force something I don't never entirely sure but usually it's abuse okay, put that to one side and the tripod socket can go through the cleaner okay so we've got that to the same stage Let's bring these two camera bodies together. Camera body one, camera body three, and I'm just looking to see what obvious differences I see, if any. Not seeing anything there. Okay, so that's good. So we'll continue pulling things down. Back to camera number one. Alright, I want the rewind button off next. I've got a pair of pliers here made to do the job. They were made by using a cheap pair of needle nose pliers, cutting the front off, sticking the pliers in the vise, and drilling down into it to get a hole the right diameter. That's our button gone. It's washer and it's spring. There's a screw here. That drives the sprocket from the sprocket shaft. I should be able to push the sprocket shaft out now. I can. Lift out the sprocket. The sprocket won't need to go through the cleaner. That was the bush falling out from the film advance. Put those to one side because I'm pretty sure they'll be different on camera 3 and I want them there to compare. At the base of the camera, here is the spring that activates our lock lever for the rewind button. I'll remove that screw. Bring to one side with the other stuff that doesn't go through the cleaner and remove the lock lever. It can go through the cleaner. Sometimes these are bent. Sometimes they'll straighten up. Other times they will not. Our film advance shaft here is held in place with three screws visible through these three holes here when you get them lined up right is about there. That should lift out. We open the back of the camera. And you can lift out the take-up spool and there's a metal bush in the base of that which will need to go through the cleaner. The spool will be cleaned by hand. That's that part of the film advance and top of the camera all serve, uh, stripped down as far as we need for the moment. Here's our film advance shaft. Just recover those three screws that held that into the camera body. Everything here is quite sticky but dried out grease. And they all need to go through the cleaner. These three pieces I'm putting to one side while we pull in camera number three and do the same to that. So, rewind button.
screw that drives the sprocket. Take the sprocket shaft out. Take out the sprocket. There is our drum and the bush from the top of the camera, so they, they look different. We'll compare those in a second. To here, let's get the spring off that lock lever. Just unhook that, take the screw out. And there's three screws for the film advance shaft. Lift out the film advance shaft. Lift out the take up spool, remove the metal bush, it's going to go through the cleanup. Alright, that body's at the same state. Let's pop that over there. I'll just sort out my loose pieces here. So, here are our parts. These pieces from three, these pieces from one. We'll start with the clutch assembly, that's these pieces. The clutch assembly from number one, I'll pull that apart. You can see that when it's assembled, the central piece here is level with the inside there. It sits down into a recess in the drum. Here's the one from camera 3, and you'll see that that sits up on top. The drum itself, what, the, what's the difference in height with those? The drum on camera 3 is shorter than the drum on camera 1. <coughs> Excuse me. So there was a certainly a difference there. This central piece is aluminium on camera 3. It was uh, nickel plated brass on camera 1. So, the bush is at the top of the camera. Well you can see there there's quite a substantial difference. There's a lot more metal on this one. Um, does it do anything? Probably not. I don't think that the drum in there is such a snug fit that it stops things rattling around and here's the later one it's obviously much shorter from the side they look pretty similar in terms of the gear that sits on them it doesn't look like one sits higher than the other And the shafts, well obviously one's brass, the other one's nickel plated brass. At the top, are they any different? The squared off area on the top of the plain brass shaft from the later camera, that squared off area is much shallower than the same piece on the nickel plated shaft from the first camera. I haven't noticed that that causes any problem in use. Uh, you may suspect that because it's a, you've got less metal in contact there with the bush, with the drive dog, that that would be inclined to um, get pushed out of shape. But I haven't seen any evidence that that's the case. 
is recovering those loose screws from there. So apart from that, what about the business end down at the bottom? Those cams look the same. They do to me. Alright, so I'll sort those into their respective bins. Alright, removing the leatherettes from the front. This is camera number one. I'll see if I can get the leatherette loose at the ends. You have to be careful at the top. Where that embossed line is, it creates a weakness right here. And that could cause the leatherette to snap at that point if there's any reluctance to move. Okay, I've got my scalpel in right underneath the end there, working back towards the, the corner. This is stuck quite well and I've already got a crack at that point, so I've got to be quite careful with this. Now leatherette's loose here. Leatherettes will come off here if the camera has got the any surface corrosion. This camera really has very little on it of that nature. So the leatherettes are stuck quite well. You know, I'm working back to the corner again in the other direction. Yeah, the leatherette's popped off nicely. So we've got a cover plate here. That covers a screw at this point. Now that's the adjustment for the cord tension. Pop that leatherette to one side. I'll get the other leatherette off on this side. This is looser at this corner, but I don't know that means I'll be able to get all the way along it. Let's find out. That crackling sound is the sound of the adhesive giving way. It probably points to it being the original adhesive which would point to the camera not having been serviced before. Okay, so I'm going to lift this leatherette up gently. Don't overdo it because the stuff's brittle and it can just crack. I'm just lifting it enough to slide my scalpel underneath. And my leather it's loose. We've got to get the badge off the front next. Let's put camera number one to one side. Let's do camera number three. I'll try the same again, coming in from the ends. Oh. It's got a different feel to it. It's got a stickier feel to it. It's not as brittle. Leather, it's always hardest to deal with around an edge like this. It it bonded more firmly around that edge and so they're prone to damage. Okay, let's see if I can lift the leatherette slightly and slide underneath it with a scalpel.
whether it's cracked at that point so I've got to be very careful there it may even be a piece that's going to fall out there yeah that's um, going to be a problem What I'm trying to do here is make, get my scalpel to scrape right down underneath that piece of crack letterette to make sure I get all of it. That I leave none stuck to the camera body. Yeah, I've already got a couple of nicks through this letterette. It's stuck very well. And have a look under here. It's got a different lot of adhesive under there, that's not the original. I'll try a few drops of naphtha down there, see if that'll soften the stuff a bit. Sometimes this works very well. Sometimes the stuff immediately softens up like this and you can get the letterette off. A couple of times it doesn't. Okay, so there's our letterette. It's not as pretty as the letterette from camera number one, but that'll go back nicely enough. Letterettes often have to be cleaned up to a fairly large degree to get them off and getting them back on again and getting them looking presentable. Okay, so this side. We already know that naphtha is part of the solution here, so I'm just going to dribble some naphtha down here. Well, you don't know what state these leatherettes were in before they were glued back last time. So some of the damage could be long-standing damage. And it's cracked right there on the corner, I can see that. Okay, that's going pretty well. Yeah, it's stuck very unevenly. And it may be when the leatherettes were put back previously that the old glue wasn't clean from the casting and so there were lumps and bumps there that the scalpel won't slide over easily and you may be wondering why I'm bothering to get the leatherettes off completely 
instead of just peeling them back up far enough to get to the fixing screws. And the answer to that is that if you just fold them back up far enough to get to the fixing screws, and this one sort of shows a line like someone's attempted that in the past, you end up with a crease across here, and you'll never get rid of it. Okay, so here we have the camera, body with the leatherette off it, and you can see that there's quite a difference there. Camera 3 and camera 1. Camera 1, there's very little uh, residue on the camera body. Camera 3, there's plenty. Some of that's adhesive, some of it's the backing from the leatherette. Alright, so let's carry on taking these things apart. Camera number one. We need that Kodak label off. Now that Kodak label hasn't been abused. Normally they've been abused, like this one. This one's a bit ripply. And it's got a, a lot of abuse at the end here. Now what's happened is someone's used a needle and pushed it in at the end to try and get that loose. Let's see if we can get this loose. I'm going to use some CRC Lectra Clean here because it's a bit more aggressive than NAFTA. It's softening adhesive. I just want to put a few drops on there. That was probably a bit excessive. Pop that to one side. Do the same for camera number one. Now I'll, I'll leave that to soak for a minute, I'll get a toothpick and we'll start poking at it and see if those things will break loose. 